about 277 North Avenue. Okay. How many days later? Five days later? <laughs> it's been interesting. <laughs> I've talked a little bit about Smith Land Review, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, you still came back. Yeah. Nice. By the way, that's dangerous. <laughs> So what we're doing is we're taking a look at sort of the informally giving you some feedback on the possibility of a flexible subdivision on, on this property at 277 North Avenue. That's correct. And you're going to sure. just sort of run through what, yes. what, what your thoughts are and see what our responses are. That's right. And I, I noticed that, the, that the, one of the co-chairs of the Historical Commission is here. Phyllis is here. Yes. Phyllis Halbert. She was here last week, too. She was, and, and um, we're sorry to have kept, kept you waiting for so long last, last week. But um, Phyllis, are you going to talk in support of this, or are you just here as moral support? I don't necessarily support? need to. I Yes, I'm, I'm here to find out what you have to say and also to say that we use, you know, um, the Historical Commission is in support of having a res preservation restriction on at, at this house. Great. Okay. So and, and since we met with you, we, we did meet with um, Betsy Ware, uh, had a, a meeting with her, and our engineer, uh, Rob Gemma, who's, who started some of the site work. He's, he's definitely not complete, but he's at a, at a point where he thinks that we can get to the density proof plan with, with two waivers. Um, one waiver is the, the, the dead end road. So this is not what we're proposing we do. This no, is the density plan, density plan. Um, which proves. So, and actually, a couple things, or one thing that's changed, I guess, since we talked last. So we, we now have um, under agreement to purchase the property next to us, which is 293 North Ave, um, which Great. will allow a better uh, location of the driveway. Uh, and I think a better flexible plan, um, and I think incorporating both of the houses um, in the flexible is going to allow both of them to be you know, preserved in the future. So um, I think it's positive. Um, that's, that's what I've heard from, from Betsy and the other people that we've talked to. Uh, we were, as we were trying to figure out how we would shoehorn in uh, a flexible development on just 277 North Ave, there were some challenges just around um, you know, where that driveway would be located um, and it likely would have needed to be on this kind of the garage side, which would have impacted this neighbor uh, quite a bit. So um, maybe I'll show you, I guess. And this is a draft. Um, let's see. Okay. So there. Oh, we got it. There was only about the next door to the one that he brought down. Well, we're talking about east on North Ave or west on North Ave? We mean east on I mean, it, isn't this like... It's across the street from uh, oh, Western it. Market. Right, so it's this one, the one with the pool in back? This, right this is 293 North Ave, which is uh, directly across from Western Market. It does have a okay. pool in the back okay. currently. Okay, so that's the one you bought? Yes. Okay, we're, thanks. You know, right. And your house is just to the right of that? Yes. You can just barely see 293, and this is, this is our house right. here. Uh, and then the, the, the little tiny um, house to the east of your house that you're leaving alone, that be, you're going to be able to spare a little bit of space around. Yeah, right? so yeah. this is a, a really just a draft flexible plan, and I, I think it's going to change slightly because we're, we're trying not to move. Uh, there's a dry stack stone wall here, and I, I think we can get there with potentially some easements and a couple other things. So uh, I could. I can't even see it here, but um, we're also we also need to work with or we're going to work with Joanna to figure out what works best from her perspective. Um, you know, obviously it's going to impact the two houses that we will own quite a bit because um, it's going to be located right behind. Um, I think the house siding is is potentially going to be the, the bigger challenge for us, um, and part of that is just we don't know what's happening uh, here yet, so. Um, we went with an architect who said, you know, you should, you should cite it so, you know, this is where the sun goes, right? So you, you cite it so that it would look this way, but if they put their 40B in there, that would not be ideal. So I think it's probably something different from that. Um, 
but this is kind of what we've come up with thus far. There are a couple of big, like very mature, mature trees that we want to make sure that we save, so we're trying to figure out how to work on that. Um, I think when we had talked last, we had talked about there's a little over two acres uh, up on the hill that would um, we'd grant some type of easement or, or figure out something where um, where we provide you know some of the public benefit. I guess would be uh, you know there's a five or six neighbors that bought this land. And, and actually, that's really the genesis of how this started, um, just given the neighbors have been, just, we've all been upset around this process um, and figuring out you know, how we could best utilize this land. Um, a couple of our neighbors approached us and said, you know, you've talked about it in the past, wanting to build a house for yourself. Um, you know, we'd be supportive of you building something down here, you know, on kind of the low part. Um, which the majority of this, there, there's not going to be like sitting through some of these site plan reviews where uh, people are taking down 100 trees and there's maybe a couple at the most and they're going to be the, the small trees. So um, because most we can look, you know, most of this is it's it's grass here, right? You know, it's grass um, for the most part. So we can retain uh, a fair amount of the, the existing woodlands. Um, I guess the, the one hiccup that that has come up. Um, so we met with uh, historic commission twice, and, and I think in the second commission, uh, second meeting that we had with them, they, they said that their expectation is that um, in addition to granting the easement up here, which is the public benefit, um, you know, we think we're providing some public benefit by just it's a relatively low density development in comparison to what's happening next door. Um, their expectation is that a preservation restriction would be granted for free. Um, which was, maybe I didn't ask the question, but that wasn't uh, the expectation that, that I had had. So I think you know, part of the, the reason to come back here is one, is to get your thoughts on kind of how the flexible works, and two, uh, get a sense for you know, how much public benefit do we need to provide. Um, I think by you know, locating the two existing houses on, you know, call it 15,000 or definitely under 20,000 square foot houses, or square foot lots, we're on a scenic road. Um, I think we provide a, a fair number of the things that you're looking for in a preservation restriction. Um, but I, I think we're looking for some clarification regarding whether the planning board's um, expectation is that we would be providing that for free as well. Um, we, we think there's a lot of, we, we think there's going to be a lot of, having sat through all these meetings. Um, We'll see if we're able to get through this and, and still get along with the neighbors. It seems like it's it's kind of difficult to do, um, but we think we're going to have a, we have a lot of support from a few, and we haven't talked to all. Um, but we think um, most of the neighbors are going to be sort of supportive of it because it's going to um, you know it's essentially this lot and this lot, these two lots. There's just been a long story, and I think you know goes way before even our time living here, uh, and I think. To some extent, this is you know four and a half acres that, from my understanding, is, is it's basically done at that point. No one, no one's going to be able to do anything in the, in the future. These houses are going to be here forever, um, and, and I think it's a plan that the neighbors support. And, and, and before we really ramp up Rob Gemma and get everyone uh, going from that perspective, I wanted to, to kind of circle back and, and give you um, our thoughts on, on where we're where we're landing. So, what do you need for waivers? We need a uh, dead end road, and we need uh, street radii, uh, which, which is so okay. under the original, if an adjustment 277 North Ave, we would have, would have needed a lot, you know, driveway width. There would have been a lot more waivers in I think. Um, that, would, that would be my guess, but we're at street radii and, uh, and dead end road. Although for the density proof plan, yeah. you could have just ignored the existing building and just brought that back in for the flexible. Which but is which is kind of what we did. We it, it said it technically says like to be raised technically, but um so we're, we're not, do, we're not doing that. It's an improved plan, so right. it's an academic exercise. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I'm clear on are you said what is the issue on the preservation deed restriction, Phyllis? Um, um, well I guess it's um, whether or not the town we would go before the CPC and get and ask for, um, and, and and then town meeting to ask for um, funds for 
for the project. Well, so it's not like we've never done it before. Right. No. Right. It, it, we just they, didn't know that that was. We were hoping that we didn't have to do that. That it would just right. be something that they were interested in getting, as you know, as, as for the, you know, for the benefit of having the, um, the, the flexible subdivision. But you know, it's not that it's impossible. It's just that we just we didn't know. No, I, I think he's he's doing a lot for the town yeah. <laughs> already. Um, yeah. So, if it's to be clear, if, if, if the town doesn't want to pay for it, right? And you think we can get there by making the small the lot small enough, or you know, we're open to that as well. Um, but granting, I, I've looked at the preservation restrictions. It's like a 40, 50 page document. If, and we are going to have eventually. We are going to have to sell these houses. I, I have some current concerns that there there will be an impact on the value of those houses. Yeah. I don't know. I I, I think it's a no brainer. I mean, don't you think the town would vote for a preservation to compensate people? For yeah, a I would hope so. It's just it, I, we we didn't have we didn't know that that was being asked for at the beginning. So. Phyllis, so, your question is: Do they get a flexible? Subdivision plus a preservation fund. Yeah. That's your point. You were wondering that. No, I think we would have agreed to it. Compensation. Mm. How many houses, by the way? I can't quite see. So, so these two will stay. Okay. And there will be a driveway. Uh, in between the two of them, and they'll okay. be one, one new house. Okay. Yeah. How many houses are there? Three houses. Three houses. How many houses are preserved? Uh, we were discussing the preserving the whole one house. This one's uh, 1821. Uh, this one's, I think, 125 years old. We, it doesn't, I don't know, it, it doesn't look like. Uh, Okay, so you kind of you yeah. talked about options. If you don't get historical restrictions, then you said I'll have to go to Plan B. What was Plan B? We didn't get funds for historical preservation. Did you have thoughts there? Uh, well, if if there was no historic preservation on the house, yes, then I wouldn't expect funds, and we would we would just the public benefit would have to be this, right? The two acres. Right. If there were no, you know. And how would the development uh, differ? I'm just trying uh, to get a sense of what you're saying. Therefore, what? The, the, the development wouldn't differ. Okay. The, the town just wouldn't have that preservation, the formal preservation. Okay, so that has to be a risk going forward, but you're not going to I, I mean, we'll, we'll be selling these two houses, but I, I think okay. once you put these houses on third of an acre lots, I mean, it's just not going to make any financial sense for anyone to tear them down at that point on, on North Ave. So I'm unclear on what's in the rear lot right now. Is, there is an existing house there, or there isn't. This is the proposed new house. There, there is. This is basically field for the most part. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. It starts probably here. We start to get the woods. Um, I, I don't have one going the other way, but it looks very similar to this, where you know, this is kind of the line of woods, um, and it's. It's a couple hundred feet of the lawn. And what's the benefit to the town with the property up top? I didn't quite get that. The, the, so in order to get a waiver, my understanding is you need to provide some level of public benefit. So yeah, I, I think, some give and take. Yeah, so I, I, there is definitely, well, in the minds of these neighbors anyways, yeah. there is, this is roughly, I think it's two and a quarter acres of land that will be an easement, right? So no one could ever take these trees down. And a lot of these houses, right, were built such that their views were oriented over this space. Um, so people have you know, always been concerned around so that's your property what, you Yeah, this, this okay. is our property here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the whole of it. Yeah. Okay. So it's, uh, it's got, you know. It's not developable already. You can kind of see it up here, I guess. It's four and a half acres in total. I think this works. Yeah. <clears throat> Looks good to me. And, and site plan review, does site plan review happen for the new lot or does it happen for 
what, the way it's going to work is that we, we issue a decision, a special permit decision. First of all, we issue a decision on the density proof plan. Yep. Then we issue a special permit decision on the flexible plan. Yep. Typically, the flexible plan uh, includes one of the conditions for the special permit is site plan review of the proposed house. You don't have to actually design the house yeah, to get the flexible plan, but when the house is designed and there's something real to propose, then we get the site plan review of the yeah. actual building. Okay. But it's not, you're not opening up site plan review on these two houses where it's it's the new house. Well, right? it, it, it depends on what's happening on those Right. You know, if, it, if they stay essentially the same, then it's they're not changing. Pretty, yeah. Pretty cut and dry. Na neighbors are supportive. Is that what I heard you say? So these neighbors definitely are. Yeah. Uh, we've talked to Joanna. Um, you know, she's obviously concerned about her, her view here. So we're we're going to do what we can to cite the house. Um, we, would, we would put a line of evergreens, but she doesn't want that. She wants to retain kind of the view to the left. Uh, to the right. No, I mean, what about the neighbor to the one? I, I have not talked to this neighbor yet. Okay. Uh, we close on this property. No, I, I think it's. Just want to make sure it's workable. And it's workable. No major concerns. No major concerns. I agree. And then I guess we'll work with the story commission. And there's, uh, I guess, what would happen if the town didn't. Like so, they'll do an appraisal and figure out what that value. Is. What, what happens if they don't oh, approve? It doesn't happen. But it's it's not going to stop us at that no. point. We were, we've offered it up, right? People okay. don't want to take us up on it. Right. It's, it, it doesn't stop the flexible process at all, one way or the other. So, but you know, I think you know, town meeting knows the whole story. I right. think it's a pretty it's, it's just, yeah. Sorry for. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good job. We'll do it this. Good luck. Good Thank you. Thanks, man.